In January 2010, urgent work commenced to restore our city's most cherished heritage icon for what is turning out to be restoration of enormous proportions. When it was built in the 1920s, it was referred to as a superstructure, and you're about to see why. Good evening. Last time we took you inside Brisbane's historic City Hall was to look at some of the challenges faced in the massive job of its restoration. Well, since then, a lot of work's already been done, although from outside it might look as though not a lot's changed. Tonight, we'll show you part of what's already been done and some of the amazing discoveries made along the way as we chronicle the largest restoration of a public building ever undertaken in our nation's history. Come with me as I take you to the dizzying heights of the auditorium ceiling. Just being able to reach up and touch the globe in the middle of the dome is an amazing experience. But if you think this is impressive, remember it's a, a restoration top to bottom. Down below the basement, archaeologists have uncovered mysterious objects that laid untouched for almost a century. What you're about to see is the delicate work and sheer engineering strength and skill being employed to combat the building's greatest enemies of water from above and below. And along the way, you'll get to see what's been hiding behind literally hundreds of false floors, walls and ceilings added over the past 80 years as a team of heritage experts, archaeologists and engineers uncover structural and safety issues, some of which are far worse than expected. But before we get to that, let's go back to where it all began, right here in the main auditorium, where in January 2010, work began to fix the structural and fire safety issues of the dome ceiling, as well as those notorious acoustic problems. Before any work could begin, there was something that needed to be taken care of. The 118-year-old Henry Willis organ was simply too delicate to withstand the restoration. It's a rare instrument. There are only two of its kind in the world, the second being in Westminster Abbey. So the restoration is a unique opportunity to restore the organ before it's brought back into the building. They call it the king of instruments and my task is not only to get the mechanics right but get the soul of the instrument or the sound of the instrument right for this building. Normally um, if we were going to be working on this organ we'd leave most of the structure in place and we'd work on the various components but because the whole hall's being done and because of the dust factor and even the fact we're going to lose the floor here we're taking the whole lot out. So it is quite a rare occurrence first time since about 1927 when it was actually put in. We've got basically two years to do up the various parts we've got to do up and then put it back in. Two years sounds a lot of time, but when you actually start analysing every little bit and putting it together on a time span, we're going to be working pretty hard. It took almost a month for workers to dismantle all 4,747 pipes and take them away to storage. And it was during this process that they came across an interesting discovery. These are the show front pipes here and this looks remarkably like Story Bridge paint. And they repainted the pipes in this uh, gunmetal colour with the darker mouths. When the organ uh, first went in, this is the original colour of the pipes. When we actually took the um, pipe ties that hold these pipes up, there's the original colour still, still there underneath. The organ will now start to undergo some restoration work of its own before being brought back into City Hall. Restoration means that we clean all the pipe work, we get all the action working well and then 
we've got to make sure that it's absolutely spot on. We don't want to change the character of it. That's very important that we maintain the character of the instrument, merely that we freshen it up so that the people who heard it in 1930 would recognise it today. And it looks as though those large showfront pipes will once again be painted gold. Once the organ was removed, the next challenge was accessing the dome ceiling. And this was a construction in itself. Our time-lapse cameras captured the process as workers took two weeks to build this magnificent 23 metre high bird's nest scaffold. Workers now had safe access to parts of City Hall, usually only observed at a distance. It was a rare and wonderful opportunity to appreciate the artistry of the magnificent sculpture work created by the renowned Brisbane sculptor Daphne Mayo. Believe it or not, these are life-sized sculptures modelled by Brisbane residents during the 1920s. Coming up next, we'll show you the work being done around these priceless treasures to strengthen the dome ceiling above them. <laughs> 